Hola. Hola. Lightspeed Spanish. This is podcast number 28 for beginners, absolute beginners. And but by this point, you're not absolute beginners. No. And today we're talking about some tips to help your Spanish, to help your spoken Spanish and your written Spanish. Okay. Pero primero, Cindy, ¿qué tal? Muy bien. Sí. Muy bien. Ajá. Sí. Pero bien, bien, bien. Fenomenal. Oh. Estamos de vacaciones, vacaciones sí. de Navidad. Sí, de verdad. ¿Y qué tal estás tú? También estoy fantásticamente. Me alegro. Siempre sí. estás fantásticamente. O, Muy bien. o no, a veces estoy fenomenal. <risa> Entre fantásticamente y fenomenal. Sí, 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 sí. Muy bien. Me alegro, Gordon. Gracias, Cindia. Vale. Ok, so. Some things to bear in mind when you're learning Spanish or we're learning any language, but we're dealing with Spanish here. As students of Spanish, particularly as beginners at this level, one thing that you cannot do is to speak like you would in your mother tongue. Okay? You can't make sentences, long sentences. You can't uh, make very complex sentences. Why? Because you haven't got the skills yet. Okay? And this is what you're building up on. So, one first tip is this. When you want to speak, when you want to make a sentence, first of all, try and work on this principle. One verb per sentence, okay? Or at least one thought per sentence. Um, that means, you know, don't try and make a really, really long sentence. Make it very, very short. Now, that might make it sound a little bit more boring, but that's fine because... The shorter the, year, the sentence is, the more likely it's going to be accurate. And you're not going to lose your audience or your one person that's listening to you. <laughs> yeah? And Cynthia, you were saying about the, what to keep in mind when you're talking to people, as though what? Uh, yes, um, maybe it would be helpful to think you're talking to a child. What would you say? How would you resume um, your sentence or your English or your language if you were talking to a child? then translate that into Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's a really important point. Talk as though you're talking to a child, but even even extra is talk as though you were a child. Is resume even a word? How about me? Um, sum up. Sum up, yeah. Sum up. En resumen, just, no? En resumen. Yeah. You see, that I've, I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah just and you were criticising me for doing it the other day. Yeah? No. To sum up, sum up. exactly. Yeah. So you... And, and so the, the metaphor that I use is this. Imagine you've got an onion, okay? I think I might have used this before. You, your sentence, the one that you would like to say, is the full onion, but you can't do it. So what you do is you peel off the layers until you get to the point, that the thing that you can say. Even if you cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if not, other people might be crying as they're trying to listen to you, okay? So that's tip number one. Tip number two. If you're an English speaker, especially, I can't really speak for other languages, but our language is littered, absolutely littered with metaphors, um, idiomatic expressions, okay, sayings that do not translate, that do not translate. And one of the errors that we can make is when we try and translate those into the other language. Um, what was the example that um, we had? Somebody put... Uh, Cheesy. Yeah, they were talking about a film and they said... What was it? I don't know if it was a film. But they said that, that film was a bit cheesy and they put... Queso. Un poco queso. Yeah. But it doesn't work. That would be... That, that's, that's a bit cheese. Cheese and then we will go... Mm. Okay. Cheese. Yeah. So, un poco cheese. queso. But, yeah. Um, so, I, I, I have um, a, a lady who, who I'm teaching and she... At the beginning, she doesn't do it now because she's, she's learned not to do it. But at the beginning, she would be like struggling, struggling, trying to formulate a sentence. And she would say something like, um, uh, how would you say fed? And say, fed? Fed. Like she, I've never she, been she, fed. Yeah, fed. And I'd say, why do you want to say fed? Ah, fed she up. Say, I, I want to say I'm fed up. Ah. <laughs> and I used to say to her, you can't do that. That doesn't, it doesn't work, you know, estoy alimentado hasta aquí. Arriba. <laughs> sí, arriba. It won't work. So that's either tip number two. Please watch, watch out for, for metaphors. And they're hidden sometimes, yeah? they, they are hidden. 
For example, I'm going to drive my mum to the airport. You understand that? That's not true. I'm not driving my mum. I'm not getting into my mum and driving her. But we say that. But you don't say that in Spanish. No. no? What do you say? I'm taking my mum. Yeah. Which is the, really the, the correct way of saying it. Well, I don't know if it's correct or not. Well, it's, it's, it's more correct way. than I'm driving my mum. But if you said take, it doesn't imply you're driving a car. No, but you would normally say I'm taking my mum in the car, no? You would specify if you were going to take her on the bus. You could take, specify, but you don't yeah, have to. So yeah. You, so, but at least you imply you have to drive. Yeah, and it's also, uh, for example, when, when we say I'm flying from Manchester. <laughs> yeah? Well, you can say I'm flying as well. But it's not common. It's normally you say I'm catching the, the plane. No, you can say I'm flying, but what you can say I'm catching yeah. the plane. Yeah, but it's... it's so you, you've got to be careful with things yes. that are hidden inside. Sentences that for us are very normal, but if you translate them, they, be, they, they become weird. Yeah. Yes. Also, verbs, because in, in English it's very common to have a verb and then a preposition, and it changes the meaning. You mm -hmm. can get get, but get down is not the same as get up, or get away, or get by. That's so right. If you learn get, yeah. Don't think that you, okay. I know get which is conseguir yeah and then yeah, if yeah. it's get down I just say conseguir abajo because it just doesn't work do you know what I mean? absolutely even if yeah. it's the same word in English get yeah. something get at get by get and, and this is what this is the, the tip number three is before you launch yourself into your sentence as long as you keep it short you can actually think of the end think of what you actually wanted to say because what, what happens quite often is people start to go into the sentence word by word of, of from English. They're going just word by word. And of course you get into, you know, where um, um, I and I want to get off the bus. And if you try and translate get and off, it won't work. You know, there's a different verb for get off, um, to get on, for example. So that's the other thing is you, you must look at the sentence in its entirety not word for word don't translate word for word as you go because you just end up with a mess and, and people don't understand what on earth you're on about okay yeah that happened to me I remember once uh -huh. um, that I recall a lot when I was at university would you believe and we had to do an essay about I don't remember um, in English in the mm -hmm. English class and I thought I was good when I was at university. I was about mm, 20, mm -hmm. 19, 20 years old. I thought I was good. I thought, ah, yes, I, I can handle that. I did it, and I got, when I got it back, it was I had so many words like crossed in red, oh, red, no. red. Oh, you know, when you get those papers with red, red, red. And then at the bottom, my teacher put, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like, don't attempt to say the same you were saying Spanish in English because it doesn't work or something sure. like that. I was sure, yeah. And lots of sentences were like, even whole sentences crossed mm -hmm. and written afterwards. I was like, oh man. I, I really had a, like, a moment of, Damn. I'm not that good, but it, it helps. It's a, it's a learning it helps, process, isn't it? Yeah, to, right, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go here. I'm going to start here yeah. and build up. So, and that's why, what Cynthia's saying, that's why using it online translators sometimes works for you sometimes it's a mess no. and I've had people giving me essays um, for their GCSE exam um, yeah, and you, that I know have been put through translated because yes. as soon as you read it you Straight think away. what on earth is this yo lata hablar español yo lata <laughs> because they put I can speak Spanish but can they didn't put can the verb can to they put able. can as a can like a tin so they put yo lata hablar español hmm I think not <laughs> <laughs> they translate they translate it maybe for you lots of yeah. times it's like yeah how's that so don't yeah and don't count on translators no, either. no, yeah. no. because a translator if it, just like in English if you use the word ball what, what's it going to translate? Is it going to be a football? Is it going to be somewhere that you dance? Obviously, I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball, you know, so translators won't work. So, again, the shorter the sentence, the better. And, and the easier. The, it's much the easier. easier, yeah. 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 
And, and you don't have to look for obscure verbs. You know, you can use it. Sí, vale. Simple verbs. Simple verbs, short sentences, avoid translators, and Bob's your uncle, and Fanny's mm -hmm. your aunt. Ok. Bueno, entonces, nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego. Adiós.